My name is Richard Moran. I work for the Department of Chemistry at the University of Washington and I'm going to show you how to do physical vapor deposition. This is an important technique because not only does it allow for you to t have a chemical become a vapor and go straight onto the glass side as the same molecule without decomposing, but also it is very easy to control the thickness and the rate at which the chemical is deposited onto your substrate. So everything takes place underneath this bell jar where the pressure is going to become extremely low and then at that point the temperature we're going to increase it and at, as the temperature increases it'll turn straight into a vapor before melting and, or decomposing and go into an even thickness onto your substrate. So now I'm going to take off the bell jar and show the hardware underneath. While most vapor deposition instruments have a lot of variety, there are a few things that they share in common. To begin with, there's always some sort of sample holder. In this, it's an aluminum block. This aluminum block, as you can see here, has holes in the top where you can put your sample. It's around a glass rod so that it can be heated until it gets to a point where it turns into a vapor. Above that, there has to be some sort of guide to take your sample and then when it turns into a vapor, get it to the substrate without it running wild around the bell jar. On top of that, there's this shutter here. This shutter is so you can easily control when you want to have your chemical going on to your substrate. And above that here is the substrate holder itself where you're going to put, in this case, a glass slide. Above this is an optional heating lamp that you can use to heat the substrate, but it is not crucial to vapor deposition. So first, it is important to get your chemical this particular one is a chromophore that I use. Using a spatula, take the chemical and put it into one of the holes on top of the aluminum block. Now that the sample holder has been loaded, a glass slide is placed on top into the substrate holder. This glass slide was cleaned using acetone and IPA and is placed on top, making sure that it is directly over top of the vapor guide in the hole with the sample in it. And then the bell jar is placed on top so the pressure can begin to be lowered. So in order to start lowering the pressure, the diffusion and rotary pumps are turned on. So pump two is turned on and the pressure begins to lower. The pressure will go to about 1 times 10 to the negative 1 tor. This takes probably close to 5 to 10 minutes for this particular pump. At which point the second pump is then turned on by switching this over this way. This one will pull the pressure down below 1 times 10 to the negative 5 tor. After dropping the pressure, the temperature can be increased to the vapor deposition point. This is a custom lab view instrument that we use in order to monitor and to control the temperature for the vapor deposition. You can put in the temperature you want in a particular amount of time and also say how long you'd like for it to stay at that temperature. We tend to try and get for every 10 degrees Celsius, it take about one minute. So if you're trying to get to about 150 Celsius, then you need about 15 minutes to do so. Once you've selected these things, you can start and f finish your selections and then the machine will begin to increase the temperature. Okay, so this is a, the graph of the data put in here. So for the first 15 minutes or so, it's going to be increasing and then it'll be steady for about 200 minutes and then drop off again to try and get back down to room temperature. So now that the temperature is, is high enough that it is starting to vapor deposit, the shutter is opened and the chemical is allowed to deposit onto the substrate. You can do this for however long you'd like for your particular thickness. And then afterwards, you may close the shutter when you, when you have completed this and begin to decrease the temperature once again. So when you're done and you're ready to remove your substrate and the, pressure, the temperature has already been decreased, you can try and you need to bring the pressure back to room pressure. And this is done by in, for, in this case, by flooding the bell jar with CO2 gas. And the bell jar can be removed. So now that you have your substrate deposited on, you have a chemical on the glass, like this. 
So depending on how long you have them going for, you can get various thicknesses. As you can see here, these are three different thicknesses. So you can see three different colors because this one is closer to about two microns thick. This one is as low as 10 to 20 nanometers. It is also possible to have multiple reagents in your chemicals so that you can have a chemical reaction take place along the surface or you can modify the glass slide so that you can have different sorts of reactivity with your chemicals.